Let's start from the top. Yo, the name's Bloodstain Lane, AKA hit your bitch with the bus driver uppercut cause she was sleepwalking and it creeped me the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? You could call me the Fila Don, Mr. Machismo, the Reptilian Slayer. We live from Queens, New York with my boy Bobby Razak about to shoot this little interview. People wanna know what the fuck I do. I give you that fucking raw, uncut truth. No fucking filter, ranging from conspiracy theories, MMA, boxing, uh, social commentary, the whole fucking nine. You want the cold, hard truth? You come to me for that. That's what the fuck I do. Hey, tell me a little bit when you was growing up. Give me a little bit of feedback. I was born in East New York, Brooklyn, New York, Glen, uh, Glenmore and Crescent to be exact. You know, I was raised down in Ozone Park, Queens my whole life, man. You know, uh, coming up, in Ozone Park in the 80s, you know, there was a lot of mobsters around here, a lot of wise guys, the John Gotti era. You know what I'm saying? I went, I experienced that whole shit firsthand. You know, um, you know, when Gotti got locked up, my, na my neighborhood kind of changed a little bit. A lot of gangs started coming in, a lot of neighborhood crews. You know, it was really wild out here. You know what I mean? You had to, you had to hold your own. You, there were some blocks you couldn't even walk, walk fucking past, you know? And we were always scrapping back in the days, fighting with everybody, you know, fucking, tapping jaws, you know what I'm saying, getting jumped. I got caught a few times. I got robbed a few times. You know, you win some, you lose some out here. But um, that's the way it is in New York City, you know. And, you know, the reason why I got my name Bloodstain is because I was known for always fighting out here, and I would always have a bloodstain on my shirt. And plus, my last name is Lane, so the name just went hand in hand together, Bloodstain Lane. You know, but that's pretty much it, man. You know, growing up in Queens, New York, you see it all out here. Growing up in New York City taught me everything I need to know about life. There ain't no fucking place like it, you know. Um... And, you know, it molded me to who I am right now. You know, as a teenager, I was always fighting, always scrapping, always getting into trouble. You know, typical cliche bullshit as a teenager, you know, being a knucklehead, you know. But um, that's pretty much it. It is, man. Queens taught me everything I need to know about uh, this world, man. I, I seen everything. I seen it all, been through it all, and we're here now. And Lane, being a teenager is pure cliche. Why is that, bro? <laughs> Why the fuck is that? I don't know, because they're all fucking jerk jobs. All teenagers are fucking pieces of shit, to be honest with you. I can't... I, you know what? I live right by, down the block from a fucking high school, and these kids are just complete fucking obnoxious, loudmouth assholes. And I used to be one of these fucking kids. You know what? All teenagers are fucking pieces of shit, and they all deserve to be fucking slapped. Like, what kind of experiences you have when you're a kid? Did anything traumatic happen to you? Like, what was the defining point that turned you from a boy to a young man? Was there anything that happened in your life? Well, as a kid, I mean, not really, man. Like, I'll be honest with you, there was one time I got jumped on, uh, down the block on 104th Street. I got jumped by Latin Kings. You know, dudes were pulling out knives. You know, it, it was pretty bad, man. I took a couple bats to the head, but, you know, that really wasn't, you know, it was just regular shit for me. Nothing really over dramatic. The, the dramatic thing that really happened to me is when I had my son. That's when I started changing as a man, and, you know, I started getting more responsible and, you know, um, you know, when you have a kid, you, you're responsible for that kid, and that's what really matured me more than anything. Nothing really on the street, you know, that's just regular bullshit for me, but that situation with my, having my son, that, that's what changed me. We always were fighting in the street, man. Like, we used to get a pair of Everlast boxing gloves and just hit the street and just box right in the street, handball courts, parks, all that shit. Then in 1996, I joined a gym called Cowboys Boxing Club. We boxed there for like 96 to 2000, then, uh, really, after that, I just was boxing freelance on my own. I, I quit the gym. I met, you know, listen, I met a fucking girl. And you know how it is. When you're a young fucking kid, you start getting laid. You start getting, you know, you start getting laid and you forget about everything, you know. You, you know, you forget about everything. So I quit boxing, but I was still doing, like, my freelance shit on the street, fighting people on handball courts. Uh, took a hiatus. I got, actually, got, I had got, got my, the girl I was with got her pregnant. Uh, and we ended up getting married. And I, honestly, from that point on, I fucking bloomed up into a real fat fuck. I must have got up to like 290 fucking pounds. I was a fat slob. Um, things that didn't work out between me and her, we ended up getting divorced. This was like 2007. I said, yo, I got to get myself back in shape. And I was still watching MMA at the time. So I said, you know, let me, let me do this MMA shit, man. And uh, I joined the gym called Progressive Martial Arts over in uh, Fresh Meadows, Queens. I lost like 60 fucking pounds like in two months, man. We were going at it hard. I was doing MMA, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, um, doing grappling tournaments. I was a, I won a lot of grappling tournaments. I think I got like a 28 and three grappling record. Uh, I really got at it, man. I got a, I got a blue belt, but I didn't do too much gi Jiu Jitsu. I did mostly no gi, and um, you know I did that for about four years from 2007 to 2011, uh, and then I stopped. I chopped off my big toe at work with a jackhammer, and uh, you know. You can see it now, I'm getting like turning into a fat fuck again. 
But I'm about to get back at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, martial arts, combat sports, boxing has always been a huge part of my life, and it, and it, would, it will always be. Nate, if you stayed focused in the game, do you think you might have become a champion? I absolutely believe I would have. I feel like I'm just... The, see, the thing is, is, to me, there's fighters and there's athletes. And um, I'm a fighter. I'm, I'm a pure fighter. A lot of these guys that are succeeding now, they're athletes, and they're so great athletically that they just win just based on, it, based on their athleticism. I'm a born fighter, and I used to go in the gym. I used to clean fucking house, and people may not want to believe me, but you could go to progressive martial arts and ask the people in that gym what I used to do. Um, the problem with me was I didn't... Um, I did what the fuck I wanted to do. I ate what I wanted to eat. I didn't eat clean, you know, and that was a little bit of a knucklehead. I just, I didn't even like training. I just like going in the gym and fucking people up. And, um, you know, I feel like if I were really dedicated to the craft, I could have been something. You know, as a young man, did you have any spiritual uh, epiphanies when you was young? Did you always feel you was in some kind of spiritual quasi path or did you have any feeling what was going on? What was that? What was your mind state? Well, you, you must have been a little bit different than the average kid. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, back in uh, 1997, I went to Christ the King Regional High School, and there was this Puerto Rican kid who went by the name of uh, Hip Hop, and um, he showed us the dollar bill with the, uh, the little owl in the corner and the pyramid with the all C and I, and basically that kind of like really just opened up a whole new world to me. Uh, I started doing my own research, um, I used to go to this uh, hip hop store called Fat Beats on West 4th. And outside the store, there used to be this black guy. He used to sell um, all these conspiracy theory books uh, Malachi Z, York books, David Icke, Behold the Pale Horse. And um, when I started reading those books, I started seeing the world a lot different because a lot of things started making sense to me. A lot, of, a lot of shit at the time, I felt there was something in my gut that wasn't right with this world. As I started reading these books, I started seeing you know, the truth and started seeing things that really made a lot of sense. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, things happen to me in terms of uh, spiritually that, you know, was more on the bad side than the good side, to be honest with you. I, I'm talking about things that, you know, people are scared to talk about in general. I recently read a, a tweet that you said you stopped watching pornography. Was there like anything, was it more of a spiritual thing? Pornography is disgusting. You want to be one. You want to God on a shoot. It's disgusting. And I've been. A, I was a porno addict for a while, man. I won't lie to you. And then I said to myself, this shit is fucking satanic, man. It's fucking evil, because you got, you know, these are people who are. <laughs> this is the thing. When you start watching porn, man, and then you start having regular sex with women, and then you start getting. I. You get bored having regular sex. You want to try all kinds of weird, crazy shit. I said, yo, this fucking porn shit is the reason why I'm. I'm all fucked up in the head. And I said, it's just not, it's not normal. It's not right to, to watch a fucking uh, girl with half the fucking 94 Seattle C uh, Supersonics beating off on her. That's not normal, man. It's fucking disgusting. So, you know, I don't, I try not to listen. Once in a while, I may, you know, I'm a fucking human being. I'll slip up and I might go on bangbros.com and watch the scene real quick. But for the most part, I've kind of given up my addiction. I destroyed all my, my DVDs. And it, to me, it's just a very evil thing. Was it like any, like, um... Withdrawal symptoms from it? How Absolutely. That's crazy. That's Absolutely, crazy. yeah. It's it's an addiction, and all addictions are bad, man. It was an addiction, but you know, I I pretty much uh, handled it, and I'm doing pretty good right now. And it's definitely a, a more of a spiritual thing, also, man. A lot of that shit is poison, man. It's poison for your mind, and I can't have that right now. I'm trying to evolve. Hey, do you have any other addictions growing up that you had to battle? Like, was there anything else that you had to deal with, alcoholism, anything like that? Or no, never. I'm, I I I don't. I'm not really a big drinker. I'm not, I don't do drugs. Fahrenheit could tell you that. Um, pretty much straight edge. Um, my addictions really came from sports, man. Um, obviously, my MMA addiction, my boxing, and I was a huge fo a football fan, huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And you know what's crazy? Addiction's not good with any of that shit. You know, me and this fucking kid right here, we used to fucking cry when the Steelers would lose a game. I'm not even lying to you. And then finally, the Steelers won a Super Bowl. I think it was 2006. And, like, I was going nuts, jumping. And then, like, five minutes, I realized, what the fuck am I celebrating for? I didn't win shit. I didn't win nothing. 
and I, it all came to me like, why do I have this addiction? Like, it's, it's good to, to be a fan and cheer and, you know, once you make it an addiction that it's all you're thinking about, and the same thing happened with me and MMA. I love MMA, I love the sport of MMA, I, I enjoy it. I won't say I love it, I enjoy it. I enjoy boxing, I enjoy movies, I enjoy, but I don't love these things, because to me, you, go, you can't love something that don't love you back. MMA don't love me back. I enjoy watching the fights, I think the guys are great, I think they're all great competitors, but at the end of the day, my whole day was thinking about future matchups. What is this guy gonna do? Like, he knows. That's all we would talk about is MMA. Like, I wasn't living life, man. Like, it was just my whole fucking thing. So, I've learned to kick these addictions. It just became, they become more hobbies and things I enjoy talking about with fellow uh, fellow fans. But as far as me being obsessed and having addiction with these things no more, I have addictions towards nothing anymore, really. I kind of felt personally that the sport franchises have turned sports into semi-religion. It's definitely a religious... You see these soccer people. These soccer people are not, these soccer people fight and kill each other for a team. It's disgusting. And I, I don't want to you know, go back to conspiracy theory, but this is another tool used by the Illuminati. They want, they, this is what they want. You know, and it's, it's, it's really disturbing to see, man. It's really, really disturbing to see. I mean, I've had people fucking threat. I've had people come to my house over a, a, a different opinion MMA. The video's on YouTube for you to see. Some fucking hillbilly shit-kicking redneck came to my fucking house, and I ended up beating the living shit out of him. It was fucking surreal, man. And, 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 and people were fucking just sick in the fucking head. Yep. I know you have an, I know you're a big horror film fan as well. I was watching some of the stuff that you've been. Ah uh, yes, I, I'm a big horror movie film. Uh, horror definitely. I have a. You feel that brings like a certain negative demonic. I'm starting to believe that as well, man. I was. Let me tell you something. I, I've been. I believe, and I really believe this. I swear, I believe that the uh, the Exorcist VHS was poisoned. Have you ever picked up an Exorcist VHS? Yeah. There was something very negative about that tape, the whole thing, you picked it up, well, it didn't feel right. If you look at the history of the movie The Exorcist, look at all the bad things that happened on set, people were dying, people were getting diseases later, Poltergeist. you know, Poltergeist. Poltergeist too. And if you look up the demon in the movie The Exorcist, Pazuzu was the demon, that was a real demon, you know, and it was, it was the wind demon or something like that. And, um, you know, I feel like with those movies, uh, you know, all those movies, Believe it or not, they carry some sort of low vibrational energy. They're meant to scare you, and you know, and like we always talked about, Bobby, that's not a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Fear is not a good thing. So I'm starting to realize that horror movies, you know, could also be poison too. As human, you know, as a human race, how can we learn to love each other more? What's the what's the what's the key there? That's gonna be hard, man, because right now the human race, I would say 95% of it is just pure ignorance and buffoonery, and. Um, you know, I always say this, man. I, I don't like talking about religion because, you know, everybody gets so butthurt when you start talking about religion. And when you go back into ancient times and even with the story of Jesus Christ, whether or not you believe Jesus Christ was the Messiah or wasn't the Messiah, or he was just a messenger, if you if he was one of the messengers. You know, you could go to Buddha, you could go to Muhammad, you could go to uh, all these other guys... They were delivering messages of love and peace, and they were showing you the way. That's what they, you know, they were showing you how to evolve as a human being and how to, you know, we could all coexist in happiness. But unfortunately, the people who are role models nowadays are just promoting buffoonery and ignorance and trash. Fucking Miley Cyrus promoting trash. And I always said, this is another uh, tool that they use. They latch, they get your your kids with Hannah Montana, right? They latch on to Hannah Montana, and then Hannah Montana turns into this fucking tongue fucking swagging, uh, 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 filthy animal into Miley Cyrus, twerking and doing all the other shit. So now all these little girls that will latch on to Hannah Montana are trying to be like Miley Cyrus now. You know what I mean? It's a system. It's a fucking program. So, you know, you know people need to stop idolizing these fucking losers and, and, and these people because celebrity worship is also... Um, the biggest thing, man, and TMZ and all this shit, people are so obsessed with celebrities and what they're doing and they're trying to be like them. It's really sad to see, man. You know, frankly, I could give a fuck about a celebrity. I could go to the corner store right now. If I seen fucking Beyonce and Jay-Z, I'd probably spit on Beyonce because I don't give a fuck about her. I don't care about these people. These people mean shit to me. They, they, they're no better than me. They, they're nothing. They, what are they? They sing. They rap. They're garbage.
Man, give me one uh, one word of wisdom that you might want to give to the people out there. Anything you want to give? Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> hey, any any shout outs to Street Maid? Can I give you, can you Of course, man. Maid? Shout out to fucking Street Maid. That's my people, man. Shout out to fucking my boy Shane. Shout out to Emily. Shout out to Bobby Razak, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? Thank you. Shout out to fucking Mr. Fahrenheit, fresh off a fucking street fight last night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, we're here, man. Queens, New York, man. And uh, we ain't going nowhere. More reptilians will get slayed. More devil worshippers will get punched in the fucking mouth. Can we have an outro from you, brother? The last final say. Yeah, man. Everybody, stop being a piece of shit. This goes for everybody in this fucking world. Stop being a piece of shit. Be a good human being. Love one another, care for each other, you know what I'm saying? Stop fucking, you know, following trends. Have original thought. Be your fucking self. Stop being a follower. Stop being a fucking mutt, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's pretty much it. Plus, stay in lane. 187 on you 666s. Respect the fucking shooter, and I'm out of here. Cut. <laughs>